This week on Vegas Revealed, Taylor Swift's Eras Tour continues to set records around the world. We are with the creative director who thought up the show with Taylor by her side. You know, she's someone who puts so much care and heart into what she does. Pasta lovers unite! A new weekly dinner series is set to satisfy your appetite, and a revamped staple in Henderson's Booze District is open and ready to serve up its spirits. Jam to the music of Hart, Pat Benatar, ABBA, and Bruno Mars at an off-strip favorite. And how a Las Vegas film house has evolved since opening last year. Um, a lot of the first run stuff we're doing, we're the only place in town playing those things. And the largest poker room on the strip. It's all ahead on Vegas Revealed. Vegas Revealed, presented by Level Up Law, starts now. Thanks for joining us here on Vegas Revealed. I'm Sean McAllister, along with Dana Roselli. And Dana, we have some Swifty news this week. We do. Actually, we met a choreographer who was in town doing a number for one of our Las Vegas shows and found out that she just finished up choreographing Taylor Swift's Eras Tour. And so we were excited to talk to her. Everything kind of comes around to Taylor these days. <laughs> well, it does. There's so many people who have followed the Eras Tour all over the world to go and see that production. So everyone's got a Taylor connection somehow. Yeah, we have that interview coming up in just a little bit. But first, we want to start off with some well-deserved recognition for a downtown Las Vegas business owner. Corey Harwell is founder of Carson Kitchen on 6th Street. He received a key to the city from Mayor Carolyn Goodman recently in recognition of his contributions to the city and the downtown culinary scene. Since opening 10 years ago, wow, back in 2014, Carson Kitchen has stood as a dining experience cornerstone. It's also been a pivotal force in transforming the culinary scene as one of downtown's first destination restaurants. Corey started Carson Kitchen with the beloved late chef, Carrie Simon, and uh, well-deserved recognition there, as you mentioned, Dana. Yeah, we've both eaten there several times, actually together a few times, and it is delicious. They're always changing things up. I love it. Yeah, they are. More congratulations to share today. Uh, for Fountain Blue Las Vegas, it's achieved a historic milestone, landing a spot on Time Magazine's highly coveted list of world's greatest places for 2024. Yeah, the recognition comes just months following the resort's grand opening. The resort, you may remember, opened in December. And by the way, Sean, I went over to La Fontaine for brunch recently, and I was walking through the casino and hotel and just thinking, it is a gorgeous property. But I had brunch at La Fontaine, and when we got a tour before the Fountain Blue opened, I remember the person giving us a tour said, you gotta try the pancakes at La Fontaine. <laughs> so I took my friend there for her birthday, and let me tell you, these were the fluffiest pancakes I have ever had in my life. I highly recommend getting them. I'm not even a pancake person, but I was like, well, I got to get the pancakes because I was told to get the pancakes eventually when I make it here. Well, and you texted me some pictures while you were over there and I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> Like holy fluffy pancakes. I know. Those things are thick. <laughs> yeah, they're called the pancakes flu souffle. And uh, they had this lemon curd uh, and berries on the side. It was delicious. So I highly, highly recommend you go over to La Fontaine at Fountain Blue and get that. All right. Well, the Booze District in <laughs> Henderson has a new addition over there. The Las Vegas Distillery is now open. It's there in the heart of Henderson's Booze District. It's been renovated and retooled and is now open to the public with a fully operational distillery. Yeah, and some of you may be going, hey, I didn't know Henderson had a booze district. Well, they do. <laughs> <laughs> and at this uh, Las Vegas distillery, there's actually a tasting room and an interactive tour that you can do too. The immersive tour walks guests through each step of the production process, so it's really cool. Each 45-minute tour includes a welcome cocktail tasting followed by an education and decision distilling history, raw material exploration, and walking tour of spirits production, aging, and bottling in the production facility. So you get a lot in that 45 minutes. You can go to lasvegasdistillery.com for more information. Well, you know, I always say that booze makes a good holiday gift. For sure. And I know before you say, no, 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 it's too soon to start thinking about the holiday season. 
Well, guess what? It's not. <laughs> In fact, it's just been announced that the popular strip tradition, Tournament of Kings, Twas the Night, is going to return this holiday season. You can see the family-friendly production over at Excalibur Hotel and Casino. The shows are taking place Wednesday, November 27th through Wednesday, December 25th. It really is a fun show. I know, Dana, both you and I have been over there a few times. So get ready to shout, huzzah! <laughs> Cheer on your favorite king. It really is a good time. I know. And you get to eat dinner while you're watching. So it makes it really fun. It's a dinner show. Um, I really enjoy it every time I go. So definitely check it out. It's a holiday tradition if you live here in Vegas. So get over there. Check this out. It's Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey out on the Las Vegas Strip after the Kansas City Chiefs won Super Bowl 58 right here in Vegas earlier this year. Yeah, the night of this party, this celebration, people were sending me videos, and a lot of these went completely viral when it was happening, and so we thought we'd share some of them with you. We haven't before, but let's tie it all into, you know, the Eras Tour. This tour has been so successful. We were like the second stop here in Las Vegas. I went to it, loved it. You're looking at some of my videos now, and after spending the summer crisscrossing Europe, Taylor is going to be back in the United States to wrap up her tour this fall. And the video you're seeing, again, is from Allegiant Stadium, which I went to, and I have been a Swifty ever since. <laughs> Mandy Moore is the seven-time Emmy nominee who Taylor trusted as the creative director for the tour. In that role, she choreographed more than 40 numbers that made up the era's production. Yeah, Moore was in Las Vegas recently choreographing a new number for the 25th anniversary of Fantasy at the Luxor. Yeah, we stopped over to the dance studio, and Taylor was a topic of conversation. In fact, Moore even said that she was at the Las Vegas show at Allegiant Stadium. Well, it's interesting because I went to the Taylor Swift show at Allegiant Stadium as well. It was my first, and I've literally become a Swifty <laughs> since being part of that experience. That experience has a lot to do with everything that's going on around her too, right? Yeah, that, that's very nice, thank you, yeah. You know, she's someone who puts so much care and heart into what she does, so, you know, I'm, I'm just, when I when I first saw it, because I also had never been to a, a Taylor Swift concert, and I just was like so taken by how much people love it. I know, I know. Yeah. So, uh, did you do a few of the numbers at the Eras Tour, all of them? I did all of them, yes. <laughs> all 40 four of them or whatever it was. I'm not counting the acoustic <laughs> section, but yeah. So when that came onto your desk, like, hey, we want you to do, <laughs> were you panicked or excited? I mean, of course panicked, because you're like, how am I going to do all these numbers, you know? But it's like anything. I mean, it's, it's even similar to doing this. Like, you just think about it in your mind. You kind of bar it out. You create it, and then you get it on the bodies. And then before you know it, something that had never been created before is created, you know, and I love that about choreography. Well, that's what I was going to say. I mean, and, and, and it shows, I mean, look at the success of that tour and many others because of the dance and the numbers. I mean, that's got to feel good knowing that that is a major part of people's experience. Yeah, I think people like dance for the most part. You know, they really can, there's something that dance says to people that like maybe you can't say with words or, not, you know, it's an expression, you know, and it's, I think anytime dance can be a part of storytelling or a part of an evening's event, you know, it's down to be a good one, I think. Great to catch up with Mandy. She is really talented. And we'll have more on our coverage of the fantasy 25th anniversary that's taking place this year. We've been over there doing a bunch of different interviews, and so we'll have that on an upcoming Vegas Revealed. It's a place where film and, yep, even showgirls are celebrated in person and on the big screen. We take you to the Beverly Theater coming up. And some of the best bands ever are being celebrated in a series of shows off the strip. We'll tell you where next on Vegas Revealed. If you've experienced a slip and fall, were injured in a place of business or on a construction site, call Level Up Law. Do you have a wrongful death case or been in a motor vehicle accident, even harmed in a rideshare? Our team specializes in personal injury cases. Call Level Up Law now at 855-LEVEL-UP. Elevate your case with Level Up Law. We've got your back. Call 855-LEVEL-UP. Your journey to justice starts here. Level Up Law, justice at your fingertips. Welcome back 
to Vegas Revealed. We know you love live music and we know you love free, right? Free is the best price. It sure is. And you know, there are a lot of bands that perform off the strip. Yes, the strip is the entertainment capital of the world. But off the strip, we have two lounges locally that have great cover bands, Sean. And people love cover bands sometimes because it's just, it's the songs you know. Well, and it's the stuff that you can go to the lounge and sing along, right. you know, and it's not the ticket price. In this case, it's free, but yeah. you don't have to pay the ticket price to hear the music of your favorite band. I know. It's just something about it. Sometimes you crave that. Well, Arizona Charlie's Decatur and Arizona Charlie's Boulder both have lounges and they have bands all the time. They have cover bands that cover like Pat Benatar, ABBA, Hart, Amy Winehouse. They have top 40 cover bands. So Decatur's lounge is called Coverall and Boulder's lounge is called Palace Grand Lounge. Check it out. Look it up. And if you're looking for a night out to maybe dance and sing along, this might be the place for you. And here's a idea for a night out for pasta lovers. The Pasta Affair is taking over Lucini <laughs> over at MGM Grand every Thursday night at 9. Mm. They say this is a great spot for dinner before a night out on the town since they have a DJ playing inside Ooh. the restaurant. And this is really cool. They also offer a pasta flight for $59, and for that, you get three of the restaurant's most popular dishes, mm. and these dishes are all made to share Love that as well. So you can get your group together, have some pasta before a night out, and then you can step into the hidden speakeasy inside there, too. It's called Shea Bippy. Oh. So you've got a dinner and a kind of an ultra lounge vibe yeah. going on. I love that. I love that. You and I have to get over there. We promised we would, and we need to do it soon. So um, good deal, though. Still to come, if you love film, culture, and that downtown vibe, the Beverly Theater is for you. We take you there for a fun event and also tell the story of this independent film house. When storms wreak havoc on your property, don't face the aftermath alone. Level Up Law is your ally in natural disaster recovery. Whether it's property damage, wind resulting in downed trees, wildfires, or water damage, our experienced team will help you. Call 855-LEVEL-UP for a free consultation. Call Level Up Law now, 855-LEVEL-UP, and take the first step toward rebuilding your life. Level Up Law, justice at your fingertips. Call today. Welcome back to Vegas Revealed. You know, there has been a lot of attention paid this year to news that major movie studios have announced plans to build some pretty large production facilities here. Yeah, it is exciting. But even before the latest headlines out of Hollywood, the Las Vegas nonprofit, the Rogers Foundation, put its focus on film with the construction and opening of the Beverly Theater, located on 6th Street in downtown Las Vegas. Yeah, we recently stopped over there to hear how things have gone since they first opened their doors and to hear about their future plans. That's right. And first, we want to share the story of the Beverly Theater. We actually put together a big piece for their opening. And you know what? We're really proud of it. And it really does tell a great story from the groundbreaking to the opening. So let's start with that. Things started stirring around in my head. And I thought, you know what? I think we can, we can do something that will really uh, finish out the block Northeast corner of 6th and Bonneville is the most creative corner in the city of Las Vegas. This is just another chapter in that story. I had a plan here way before I bought the land. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for the Beverly Theater. This is truly a first of its kind theater in Las Vegas. There are no true art houses in Las Vegas that are dedicated solely or anchored by independent film. My hope for it is that it becomes an opportunity for people to see things that they haven't yet been able to see in Las Vegas. What it means to be an independent theater is, uh, first and foremost, we are shining a light on independent uh, voices and independent arts. We are also independently owned and operated. The Rogers Foundation is not a theater conglomerate. We don't have a giant concert promoter. We're not uh, a part of a, a national booking circuit. 
we are programming for Las Vegas and for the community, and we think it's important that that programming comes from right here and not some corporate office across the country. It's a small theater. It doesn't pretend to compete with anything larger or anything else in town. It's unique. The Beverly Theater is much more than a movie house. It, it can be so many things. We have an extremely uh, nuanced ceiling grid with lots of theatrical lighting. It gives us the ability to do a lot of different things from concerts to shows and performances. We have a 5,000 pound acoustical door that slides open and shut that allows us to connect different spaces. Our sound system is the most sophisticated thing going in town. Uh, we have a very cool constellation system from Meyer that allows us to change the acoustics of the room. Uh, our seats are comfortable, they look pretty cool, but there's gonna be a time when we wanna do other stuff. We push a button and we walk them into the wall, creating more and more opportunities for people to experience us. I think we can fill a niche and we can also bring something to the community that, um, that hasn't been done, including those movies I personally want to see. <laughs> it is a great addition to our community. Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, Kip Kelly is the chief experience officer over at the Beverly Theater. We talked to him about how the first 18 months have gone and what's coming next. Uh, I am blown away by the response uh, from the community and from Las Vegas, 18 months in, and uh, we're, I feel like we're just like hitting a stride right now. Obviously, the, the timing was good for you guys, especially now that, that major studios are looking to make a home here in Las Vegas. What, what does that do for what you do on the independent side of things? We love, you know, as the entertainment capital of the world, it's interesting because we've never been the entertainment business capital of the world. Uh, the business help happens elsewhere. Um, and we recently just announced that we'll be getting into film distribution ourselves. Uh, Inc. Films will be the theatrical distribution arm of the Beverly Theater. And obviously what's happening with Universal and, and uh, other people that are, are looking at Vegas now as a place to move the operation and the business side of, of entertainment, that's great for us. And so when those things start to come, uh, it's huge, it trickles down and it's great for everybody who's a part of it. Tonight, there's sequins, there's feathers, yeah. there's showgirls. They're making you look good. What's happening? Showgirls is a, a Vegas uh, moment. Uh, I mean, we have on our walls, we have a giant showgirls poster. Uh, we think there's a lot of power in that film now, um, which is um, counter to how it opened. Um, it, it was highly destroyed. Everyone knows it was vilified even. Now it's the highest grossing NC-17 film of all time, and there's a lot of really cool Vegas history and backdrop associated with that. And so we've been trying to figure out a way to show this in a unique way, because we didn't want to just show it. We think this film's too important to Vegas. It's our most requested, like you have to show to date. Well, and you're doing really well with the uh, live music performances too. You know, we had like six shows in, in six weeks at one point, uh, which was May through June, and it was incredible. All of them sold out, and uh, you know, that's because of the acts, um, but also they were, they were great acts that would have skipped market otherwise, because there wasn't really a house for them to perform in front of their Vegas fans. So uh, anytime we can bring something like that to Vegas, like this is a discovery house, like that's what I've always said. And like, whether it's on the big screen or whether it's a, an author or a, a, a musician who has a, f a following but doesn't know where in Vegas to play, like those are the things we want to bring and it's exciting because we're, we're getting to introduce those things to Vegas. Well listen, congratulations on uh well over a, a year of success and we're excited to see everything that happens in the future too. We love Vegas Revealed, we love Sean, we love Dana. We're lucky to have you guys and we're lucky to have you here. So thank you for spreading the, the word of Las Vegas always. We love you guys. The Venetian expands its poker room. It's now the largest on the strip. And Sean road trips to the California coast and has some ideas for us. Stay with us here on Vegas Revealed. Terry Fader and Dougie Scott Walker, you're watching Vegas Revealed, dude. Woo! The Vegas Revealed podcast is now on TV. Join Dana Rosselli and Sean McAllister on Vegas Revealed, presented by Level Up Law. Weekends on Fox 5. Hey, everybody, it's Lou Nell, the original bad girl of comedy, live from Las Vegas. You're watching Vegas Revealed. 
The Venetian Resort Las Vegas just celebrated the opening of its expanded poker room in an all-new location. It's on level two of the Grand Canal Shops. Well, the iconic poker room will now feature 50 table games spread across 14,000 square feet of space. Sean, making it the largest room on the Strip, which is really interesting, and I know people love their poker rooms. They absolutely do, and when you have the largest poker room on the Strip, I have a feeling (laughs) that they'll be hosting some pretty large poker tournaments over there at the Venetian as well. For sure. Hey, recently you went on a long weekend road trip, and I thought I I was learning a lot from you when you got back because you were telling me about where you drove, and I've never been to this part of California, and you said it was absolutely beautiful, and I thought, we have to talk about this road trip that you did with the dog. Yeah, with it, and that was the main reason that we went to California's central coast okay. for vacation because the towns along there are super dog friendly. So we went out to uh, San Luis Obispo, which had some beautiful mm. beaches. We also went to Monterey and Carmel by the Sea. Ooh. It was just gorgeous. In those little villages, you know, the shop owners have little bowls of water out for the dog. Cool. You know, he got out, ran up and down the beach, just living his best life. And we were living our best lives too, because it was like in the mid seventies. <sighs> Beautiful. And the, the motels and hotels out there allow dogs or did you really have to search? No, we didn't have to search hard at all. Okay. A lot of places are dog friendly out there, whether you're doing like an Airbnb or staying at a hotel. Okay, and how long was the trip, like the drive? Uh, The drive was about six hours, so it wasn't that bad. Not horrible, no. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I love learning about like places that we can go to get out of town just for a long weekend and dog-friendly because so many people love their dogs and they want to take their dogs with them for trips like that. Absolutely, but one thing that did come to mind, our trip was seamless, flawless. Mm -hmm. We didn't run into any issues. But when you are making that drive across the desert, it is important to keep in mind that you may run into an accident that blocks traffic. You may get a flat tire or have engine issues. And you need to be prepared if you get stuck out there in the desert. So bring a few gallon jugs of water to keep in your car, bring some snacks that aren't gonna melt in the heat, and just be ready in the event you are stuck out there for any period of time. Yeah, because I mean, from where we are from in the East Coast, um, if we're on a road trip, usually it's like, we'll just hop off and take an alternate route. (laughs) There's always a rest stop or side roads. But here, it's a little different with these back roads and... It is. And when you're out there in the desert, there's a lot of times only one, maybe two ways around if you're lucky. Okay. Good tip. See, Vegas revealed. We're good for something. (laughs) Listen, if you want to watch any of our previous shows, you can always go to our YouTube channel. We put them all there. We've always got restaurant news, hospitality news, travel news, entertainment, everything Las Vegas. And you can catch up on all of our past audio podcast episodes by scanning that code that's up on your screen right now and stay up to date on all of the Vegas happenings on our Vegas Revealed social media channels. Have a great week, everyone. 